welcome to the first lecture of wireless communication today i will uh, talk briefly about modulation techniques for wireless communication so here are the contents so first of all i would like to give some overview of digital modulation you have already done a course on communication systems and we have covered basic digital modulation techniques we will rev revisit that in the context of wireless communication so why we would like to have uh, digital modulation rather than analog modulation uh, techniques for wireless communication so one of the obvious reason is that there have been a lot of advancements in large scale integration of several billions of transistors millions of transistors and we now have sophisticated digital signal processing chips available and they are cost effective also which makes implementation of digital modulation techniques very easy and it is preferred over analog modulation as you know the reason is noise immunity this you have done you will see it it is robust channel impairments this concept of channel impairment will become clear when we will study the fading concept and it is multiplexing friendly okay if you remember when we did uh, pulse amplitude modulation at that time we showed how we can incorporate tdma time division multiplexes in uh, using digital modulation techniques which is not otherwise possible in analog communication in analog modulation you have the only option available there is fdma frequency division multiplexes but in digital communication you can have uh, you know fdma time division multiplexes frequency division and there is one more thing which will be called cdma which we will see later on it's highly reliable and we can make them secure actually there are uh, there is a theory about error control codes possibly we may cover some aspect of that which are used to detect and correct the errors not only that error control codes can also be used to provide security so there is a reliability and security of model digital modulation techniques as compared to analog modulation and there is one more thing that we can implement digital modulators modulators and demodulators in software so we don't need to change the hardware if we want to make any change in modulators rather it is now software based you might have heard that you need to update the room of your mobile so in that room it is actually not only the software for application but it is also software for physical layer stuff like you can have programmable devices wherein if you want 16 qam modulation you can program it later if you want 64 qam modulation you can also have that without changing the hardware <laughs> we will see it again uh, in detail now in today's uh, this short video i would like to discuss only this aspect that there are trade offs there are some factors while choosing the digital modulation techniques which should be taken care of first of all we represent the modulation signal as time sequence of symbols you know that we have uh, we have already done sampling and then quantization so our modulation signal is represented by a sequence of symbols <clears throat> in particular if you remember pulse code modulation so we have series of zeros and ones and each symbol has m finite states okay so what do you mean by finite states uh, suppose if you see a qpsk symbol so qpsk symbol there are four possible uh, you know combinations but how many bits you need to represent each combination it is two bits so if you have m possible combinations so number of bits uh, which will be represented by each uh, symbol will be log of m to the base 2 suppose in 8 psk you have eight different combinations but number of bits will be log of 8 to the base 2 that is 3 will uh, will be represented by each symbol now digital modulation scheme will be preferred the scheme which will have less probability of error 
right where the error rate is less so we will prefer low error rate also in wireless communication especially if you see from the handset point of view your mobile point of view the snr is not so high so we would prefer low snr so the digital modulation technique which will provide us low bit error rates at low snr signal to noise ratios are preferred and digital modulation techniques should perform well in fading conditions fading is the effect of wireless channel there are several effects of wireless channel which we are going to study one is the usual attenuation the signal strength is decreased then there is multipath fading that is from transmitter to receiver you don't just receive direct signal rather there are a lot of reflections and a lot of objects are in between transmitter and receiver you know sometimes transmitter is moving sometimes the receiver is moving or both or objects in between are moving which makes a lot of fluctuations in the channel and it makes time dependent that's called fading but we should prefer digital modulation which will perform well in such you know harsh conditions also further you know spectrum is very costly <clears throat> so we would like uh, to use that modulation technique which will occupy less bandwidth and should be cost effective also but you see it's like a <clears throat> you are out to search for a bride and bridegroom you cannot see all the you know uh, properties uh, you know you will not be satisfied it is like that you cannot have a modulation scheme which has low bit error rate and then which which uh, at low snr at the same time performs very well in fading conditions at the same time has less bandwidth and is cost effective right so there is a trade off we have to trade off uh, so we may we may have suppose supp sometimes you may have a condition where you don't have any constraint on bandwidth so we can use much and much bandwidth but we would like to have as less bit error rate as possible sometimes bandwidth will be very very scarce so you can say i will sacrifice bit error rate but i don't want to use much bandwidth so you need to have a trade off so to measure that trade off we have two important factors one is power efficiency the other is bandwidth efficiency so we will see it in the next uh, video lecture that what this power efficiency and bandwidth efficiency means